So there was a Sunday school teacher who was asking their kids where Jesus, where they can find Jesus. And one kid says, well, Jesus is in heaven. Another kid says, well, Jesus is at church. Uh, Another one says, well, you can find Jesus in our heart. And then finally, this little girl spoke up and says, well, you can find Jesus in my bathroom. And the Sunday school teacher says, well, what do you mean you can find Jesus in your bathroom? And she says, I don't know, but every morning my dad is pounding on the door saying, Jesus, are you still in there? (laughs) I think Jesus is in all of our bathrooms. (laughs) All right, let's go home. (laughs) If you can pull up the scripture, Ray, please. We're going to read out of the 10th chapter of Mark today, and this is the lectionary text, and it says this. They spent some time in Jericho as Jesus was leaving town, trailed by his disciples and a parade of people. A blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting alongside the road. When he heard that Jesus the Nazarene was passing by, he began to cry out, Son of David, Jesus, mercy, have mercy on me. Many tried to hush him up, but he yelled all the louder, Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped in his tracks, call him over. They called him, it's your lucky day, get up, he's calling you to come. Throwing off his coat, he was on his feet at once and he came to Jesus Jesus says, what can I do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And on your way, Jesus said, Jesus, your faith has saved and healed you. In that very instant, he recovered his sight and followed Jesus down the road. Now, that's a a verse that we've all known, a blind Bartimaeus. We've heard that story. And, And I love that question. My teacher, let me see again. Have mercy on me. Let my eyes be open. That's the obvious question, right? Because what else is Bartimaeus going to ask Jesus for? He's blind. He wants to see. He can't, he doesn't know what's going on. But again, even though Bartimaeus says, let me see again, Perhaps that wasn't the larger question we're supposed to ask ourselves, the deeper question we're supposed to figure out when we ask about God and our spiritual lives. Because again, nobody wants to be blind. But the bigger question is, do we really want to see? Are we prepared to see what Jesus wants us to see? Or do we always say, well, show me, I want to see, and then we dismiss it? Because in reality of our lives, things are done and undone. We are some people and we're not. And and all of these things, the needs of the neighbors, the marginalized, the oppressed, we decide to turn a blind eye. I'm not so comfortable with who I am, I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to pay attention to the homeless person that I just saw, I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to pay attention to the injustices in the world, so I'm going to ignore it. We choose to be blind, we choose not to see, because sometimes that makes us feel better, right? Sometimes that makes us feel better because we can just dismiss it. Well, somebody else will help. I've been struggling this week. I had to go to Richmond on Monday to do some financial counseling for some of the students there. And when I was driving home, there was a gentleman walking alongside 40. Um, Obviously, he he had every thing that belonged to him on his back and he was walking. And Monday, it was windy and it was cold. And there was something that kept telling me, I was alone, okay? And something kept telling me, pull over and offer this guy a ride. I didn't. And I kept going. And and what I kept saying was, well, I'm too far now. Well, I don't want to get murdered. Well, you know, I don't know who this is. Well, I'm alone. I should go pick him up. Oh, man, I should stop right now and I should go pick him up. Oh, man, I should probably turn around right here in this driveway and go see if that guy needs a ride. All the while, I kept seeing, seeing that, but I turned a blind eye and I just kept driving. So finally, I rationalized and says, well, that guy will be okay. He was an adult. Somebody else will pick him up or or whatever it was. But I feel, and I share that, wow, I'm going through puberty. (laughs) I wonder how that's going to sound on the video. (laughs) But I share that because I decided to be blind. I felt, and sometimes when I drive by people, I don't feel that, but something was convicting me to go pick this guy up, and I left him on the side of the road, okay, because I chose not to listen, and I chose not to see. 
But do we really want to see what's going on? Another thing that happened to me, I don't know if any of you have HBO, but there is a documentary on HBO and you might be able to find it, and I can't remember the title of it now, but it talks about the girls in Nigeria and Boko Haram. It's a documentary about that. It literally broke my heart because they shared the stories of what happened to these girls and what happens in, in, in Africa and these third world countries. And I could not turn a blind eye. I don't have the answer of what to do. I don't have the answer of how to fix that. But what I mean is I was able to see differently and it broke me a little bit. That is what Jesus is calling us to do. Pay attention. See with my eyes. If you ask me if you want to see, be prepared to see. So the question I have is, do you want to have your eyes open? Truly seeing, truly seeing also implies relationships. It implies a deeper knowing and understanding. But again, we must be willing to do that. That blind beggar Bartimaeus had to be willing to stand up and say, Jesus, heal me. He didn't give up. He kept yelling. And as hard as it is, it's hard to do this. We often choose, again, just like I did Monday, to turn a blind eye to a need because it was a little inconvenient or I was afraid or I just didn't feel like doing it or whatever that reason may be. But I chose not to see. This, this is our spiritual condition. We talk about our soul. We talk about our spiritual lives. This is one of these verses where it asks us, how do we know how our spiritual lives are doing? Are we paying attention? Are we seeing? I think this is why the disciples always had a hard time accepting what Jesus had to say about him leaving and suffering and putting, putting other people first. And they were always arguing about who was the best because they were blind and they missed the point. And it wasn't that they were necessarily blind. They just didn't want to believe what Jesus was saying. And if you read those verses where the, the farewell discourse in the Gospel of John and some others, they're always arguing with Jesus. Jesus, you can't be right. You're not going to do this. Come on, you can't leave. Are you they chose to turn a blind eye to what Christ was saying. And again, for most of us, there are times when we get it and there are times when we don't get it. There are times when we would pull off on the side of the road and pick that person up and then there's times where we miss it and, and, and we let that person stay. We fail, and sometimes we are victorious. And it's not always darkness either. You know, one of the parts I think sometimes we miss about um, this verse is Bartimaeus says, let me see again. Restore my sight. So he hasn't always been in the dark. He knows what the light is like. He knows what it's like to see, and he wants to see again. He, like, he knows the darkness and he wants to know the light. So Christ offers us that clear vision of what true life looks like. But again, we often fail to see it. And we bump and we stumble around in the darkness until we find a little spot on the side of the road that we can just sit there and not worry about what is going on. Bartimaeus at some point had to think to himself, Maybe this is as good as it gets. Maybe this is what life is going to give me. I'm going to be blind forever. And maybe he was content to sit there on the side of the road until Jesus passed by and he knew that God was there. But you know, another thing I'm, I'm learning, and again, maybe this is as we age and, and we become um, a little bit more mature, not, not a lot, um, <laughs> but how and what we see, how and what we see determines the world we live in and the life we live. How I decide to look at things, how I decide to see things through my eyes and through God's eyes is going to dictate how my life is lived and how happy I am in my life. So, for instance, you all know I always say I'm a realist, right? So it's or Because I, I just don't want to say pessimist, right? And I'm always thinking about what can go wrong. That affects the way I live. That affects, that puts me in a bad mood. It's my choice whether or not I'm going to let something upset me or consume me or anything like that. How I decide to see something, that's why optimists and pessimists hate each other, right? Because what are you talking about? The glass is half full. It's almost empty. No, it isn't. It's ha I mean, it's half empty. It's half full. I argue because it's perspective. And somebody says, well, I choose to see it this way. And it makes my life better. But again, blindness happens in many, many ways. Not just where we can't see physically, but blind grief, 
sorrow, loss, sin, guilt. All of these things blind us to what our lives can be. Sometimes it's fear and anger and resentment and doubt and despair. Sometimes it's our failures and our disappointments, our broken dreams. All of those things help darken our world because we don't know how to operate with those all of the time and we become blind. Life is messy and I say that all of the time. And here's the thing, we don't even know what caused Bartimaeus' blindness, and that's not even really the most important question. It really doesn't matter why or what caused it. What matters is, is that Bartimaeus at some point realized, hey, I'm blind, and I need some help. I cannot see, and I need somebody else to help restore my sight. And then he held that need in front of Christ. Right? Believing, hoping that there was more. And I love this part of the verse. Again, when you read the Bible, you miss some things. Then when you reread it, you can pick up on things. But I love it that Bartimaeus was yelling, Jesus, help me, have mercy on me, restore my sight. And nobody was paying attention to him. And then he got a little louder, Jesus, come and help me, I need my sight. And then his disciples are like, be quiet, Jesus is busy, just hush your mouth. And so he got louder. And then what happened? Jesus stopped in his tracks. Jesus stopped and said, wow, I just heard somebody call me. Tell him to come here. Jesus stopped. Tell him to come here. What if Bartimaeus would have just gave up in the first call? What what if he gave up on the second call? But he knew Christ, he knew God was the only one that could restore his sight. Jesus, I believe and I have hope. Help me see again. Again, that is the cry. When we finally come there, that's when we lose ourselves before God. Bartimaeus said, here I am, God. I'm broken and here I am and I'm left with nothing. I need your help. That cry again stopped God, stopped Christ in his tracks. Our voice matters to God. Whatever we are facing, whatever we don't know if we can handle, whatever darkens our world, if I just cry out and say, God, I better have the hope and the faith to know that God's going to respond. I got to pay attention to it. But I can hear God saying, John, come here. John, I heard your voice. Come. And then, and then, what I like too, Jesus asks Bartimaeus, Right? Here's Bartimaeus, and he's standing before Christ, and he's blind, and he's saying, Lord, help my sight. And then Jesus says, Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? What do you want from me? Jesus asks him, what do you want from me? That is the question all of us are asked. Jesus stands before us when we call out, when we pray, when we don't even know we need it sometimes. Christ stands before us and says, what do you want from me? What do you want? We could either sit on the side of the road in darkness and be blind, or we can say, all right, Christ, have mercy on me and let me know. And here's the thing. There's no universal answer to that question, right? And when God, and when Jesus asks us, what do you want? That might change from day to day, depending on what's going on in our life. And that's the point, that no matter what day it is, no matter what we're facing, no matter what question we have, Jesus always asks the same thing. What do you want from me? What do you want me to do? It offers a turning point, a new beginning. It asks us to look deep within ourselves and face what it is and name what we want. Name what we want. I want to see. I want to believe. I want to have faith. I want to stop crying. I want to stop being broken. I want to have some healing. I want to be closer to you. I want to have a better relationship with my family. I want to have a better relationship with other people. I want to understand you, God, a little bit more. I want to know that you're with me. I want you to touch me. Whatever it is, God says, what do you want? We have to name it. We have to name it. So what is the one thing? Here's the question. What is the one thing you need today that will open up your eyes to see yourself and others as beautiful and worthy? What is the one thing you need from God to help open your eyes and see the beauty around you? What is the one thing you need to move from darkness to light? These questions can change your life, right? Because Jesus says, what do you want? 
and he stops and he listens. I don't know what your answers are. You don't know what my answers are. We all have answers that we give to God. I can't name them for you, but I can promise you this. If we yell out and we ask God, know this. God is listening, God is willing, and God is able to change your life. But it starts with us saying, Lord, help me to see and be prepared to see. And help us to listen for Jesus to say, come here. Come here. And of course, we know how that verse ends. Go, your faith has made you well. But again, we always think these stories, oh, Jesus does miracles. Jesus can do this and that. But almost every one of the stories we hear in the Bible, before Jesus healed the person, that person took initiative and went to find Jesus. The woman that was bleeding. A lot, I mean, Bartimaeus, they went out. The, 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 the paralyzed man that they broke a hole in the roof to lower him down. They had to do something. They had to go and they had to yell and say, Jesus, have mercy, have mercy and heal me. So wherever you find yourselves, whatever you need healing from, whatever that answer to the question of what do you want Jesus to do for you, figure that out. Stand before God because God will listen and God will heal. So let us pray. Lord, you know, again, it's easy to listen, it's easy to say things, but it's very hard to put these things into practice. So Lord, help us to have this example of Bartimaeus that is blind but wanted to see, that decided it was time to get up off the side of the road and start yelling till God paid attention. But Lord, help us to know the power of that verse, that our voice, that our cries, that our needs are heard by God, are heard by Christ, and they stop, and you turn around, and you tell us to come, and then you ask us what we need. So Lord, wherever we may find ourselves today, whatever need we have, we ask that you can bless us, take it, open our eyes so that we may see the world around us, but also your presence within us. And all of God's people said, Amen. If you'll please stand as we prepare to close the service.